I'm delighted to be here today to preside over Silver Jubilee, which will take place 24th June this year. Uganda Wildlife Authority was established August 1996 by the Uganda Wildlife Statute 1996, which merged Uganda National Parks and the Game Department. When the new institution was established, it inherited challenges such as limited financial resources, lack of institutional policies, and demoralized staff. and that staff was inadequately remunerated. However, the last 25 years have seen a lot of transformation in the institution leading to effective protection and conservation of wildlife in Uganda. Government is proud that Uganda Wildlife Authority today possesses strong governance structures. All policies of good governance, including strategic plans, park general management plans, human resource manual, financial procedures manual, board charter, annual operation, operational plans, and other operational and strategic policies have been developed and are being implemented to ensure efficient running of the institution. The Silver Jubilee celebration, therefore, is an opportunity to celebrate the successful conservation of Uganda's beautiful and varied forms of wild fauna and flora and raise awareness of the multitude of benefits that conserve that conservation provides to the people of Uganda. The celebration of 25 years under the theme improved wildlife conservation and transformation of communities. That is the theme. Improved wildlife conservation and transformation of communities will reflect on the important economic, social, and ecological roles played by wildlife conservation in transformation of Uganda communities. And for me, that is very, very important. A lot of gains have been registered in the institution's 25 years journey, worth highlighting. And I will, however, single out a few of them, of those achievements. Uganda Wildlife Staff numbers have grown from a mere 1,000 in 1996 to 2,300. There is a planned recruitment exercise of rangers this month, 8th June of this month, of, I think, 800, 850, 850 recruits by the 8th of June this month. 
the number will therefore surpass 3,000. Also important to note is the fact that staff was basically divided into three departments. That is law enforcement, finance and tourism, finance and tourism, the three, isn't it? These have been broadened to include legal, investigations, intelligence, veterinary services, veterinary services, engineering, as well as community conservation. The expansion of the, of the institution's areas of focus points to its growth and ability to adapt to changes in wildlife management. In order to curb the wildlife increase in wildlife crime, Uganda Wildlife Authority established the Intelligence, Investigations and Prosecution Units to address the increasing and highly sophisticated wildlife crime. Specialized units such as canine unit and special wildlife crime unit were also introduced. These have had a significant impact in combating wildlife crime in the country. The efforts to combat wildlife crime by Uganda, including establishment of a specialized court to handle wildlife crimes, have been recognized in international fora, like the sites where Uganda Wildlife Authority work has been highlighted. And some of you who must have read the papers, you must have heard of an incident at the airport, isn't it? Yes. Where tasks being smuggled outside Uganda were intercepted by some character with fruits and pineapples. I think you must have seen the pictures, mm. isn't it? So most of the wildlife protected areas were encroached upon as uh, encroached upon as boundaries were not clear. I'm pleased to inform you that encroachment of protected areas has been contained to a great extent through boundary marking of all protected areas and building capacity of staff in protected areas to contain illegal activities. With the exception of East Madi, Wildlife Reserve, and some sections of Mount Elgon National Park, all other protected areas have had boundaries properly demarcated. The encroachment issues in East Madi and Mount Elgon are being handled by government and should be fully sorted out as soon as I can assure you as possible because we have discussed this matter in the cabinet and very soon we shall resolve it. There has been significant improvement in all structure across the board in all protected areas. The headquarters previously having a small office at Kanjokia Street was forced to rent premises at Kintu Road until it acquired a new home at Plot 7 Kira Road. The Kanjokia plot has been developed into rental office space named the Wildlife Tower. At protected area level, Uganda Wildlife Authority has built a number of offices, premises, as well as as well as staff accommodation. More than staff housing of 1,700 units have been built over the last 25 years. And the efforts to continue improving staff working conditions continue. 
visitor numbers to the protected areas has considerably increased from 85,982 visitors in 1996 to 323,861 in 2019 before the COVID-19 pandemic showing an increase of 2,807 879 visitors. These visitors and other attractions in the country have made a significant contribution to the country's economy through their spending, resulting into tourism becoming the leading foreign exchange earner and bringing in the excess of US dollars 1.5 billion annually and contributing about 9% of the gross domestic product. The tourism sector was making a provision of about 1,173 million jobs, about 670,000 being directly employed, 670,000 being directly employed, accounting for 8% of total employment in the country, 8% of total employment in the country. And for me, that is very, very important. If there is an institution which can make 8%, isn't it, of total employment in the country, then you need about 10 more institutions. Isn't it? Then you have 8%, isn't it? Empl and then every Ugandan will be going to a nightclub and enjoying self, isn't it? Because Ugandans like to enjoy themselves. For me, this is critical contribution to the economic progress of the country. And the concession revenue in the parks has also considerably increased from Uganda shillings 345 million in 2006 to 4.2 billion in 2019 before COVID 19 outbreak. The other significant achievement for Uganda Wildlife Authority over the last 25 years is in regard to support to community livelihoods through the revenue sharing scheme. Revenue sharing scheme. The Uganda Wildlife Act provides 20% of gate entry fees to be shared with communities surrounding protected areas through their local governments. 20% of the collected gate fees, 20% goes to the local authority in that area. This is very, very important. This was the first initiative of its kind to ensure that communities feel the positive impact of conservation in their areas so that they can support wildlife conservation. Many other countries in Africa have come to Uganda to benchmark on Uganda and adopted a similar scheme. The Wildlife Act 2019 makes revenue sharing conditional grant, conditional grant from Uganda Wildlife Authority to communities through local governments. I think you know what really we mean by conditional grant. This means that funds from Uganda Wildlife Authority under the, under, the, under the revenue sharing scheme are released to implement specific projects developed by the communities themselves and agreed upon by Uganda Wildlife Authority. This should further improve the Uganda Wildlife Community relationship and contribute to conservation of wildlife in Uganda. In other words, if Bulisa district, if Kamwenge district shares from the revenue of Uganda Wildlife Authority, 1.5 billion, is it? That is a check handed to the district, 1.5 billion. The district will generate projects, is it? Projects. And that money will go towards funding of those projects in that district. 
and those projects must be agreed upon between the local government and Uganda Wildlife Authority. Have you understood what I mean? So in other words, this money cannot go to, to hold a party and bid farewell to the cow, isn't it? No. This money cannot be shared for Christmas, no. This money goes to the projects in that local government as it came from Uganda Wildlife Authority. So if a district gets 1.5 billion, my seed is it Bulisa which got 2.3 billion? Yes. Bulisa, 2.3 billion two weeks ago was given to Bulisa district. 2.3 billion. So you can imagine projects worth 2.3 billion in Bulisa district. So you can have a project almost in every parish. And that project can be school, isn't it? You can build a school. You can you, you can, can do tree, tree planting. You can do tree planting. You can do you can do can you do a road? Yeah, you can do roads. You can do roads. You can do poultry. You can do poultry. You can do uh, po poultry. You can support a health unit, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So the contribution is tremendous. For me, that is extremely progressive. Uganda Wildlife Authority registered an increase of wildlife populations for most animal species. For example, mountain gorillas population in windy impenetrable national park has increased. The mountain gorillas have increased from 257 in 1994. 257 in 1984 to 459 2018. 1994, 257, 2018, 459. The elephant population increased from 1,900 1995 to 7,975, 2020. Buffaloes from 18,000, 1995 to over 44,000, 2020. The giraffe population from an estimated 250 individuals in 1995 to over 2,000, 2020. And those who have been to Mburo, you've seen them. Um, this is Bussels. Bussels, isn't it? Yes, Bussels. The zebra, isn't it? The zebra population increased from an estimated 3,200 in 1995 to 17,516 2020. The rhinos uh, that had been declared extinct in Uganda as by 1995 were reintroduced, as you are aware, and now the population stands at 35, 35 individuals, 2022. The increase in wildlife populations is a result of a combination of factors ranging from good policies of governance of government of Uganda under the NRM government, effective ecosystem management, improved capacity of Uganda Wildlife Authority to provide security for the wildlife and involvement of communities on wildlife conservation activities. In order to mitigate and reduce human wildlife conflicts, Uganda Wildlife Authority has over the years implemented several conflict mitigation and management interventions in communities adjacent to protected areas. Uganda Wildlife Authority has excavated over 500 kilometers, 500 kilometers of trenches along selected park boundaries, including Queen Elizabeth, National Park, Kibale, 
National Park and Marshall Falls National Park trenches. The trenches are two meters wide by two meters deep and relatively effective. Relatively effective against large mammals. Large mammals, we are talking about elephants. We are talking about the buffalo, those large mammals. So these trenches are quite, quite effective. I guess large mammals, yes. More than 11,000 beehive have been procured and distributed to different community groups. The hives have been installed along the protected area boundaries. The stinging and buzzing sound of bees, the stinging and buzzing sound of bees irritates and scare away an elephant. While the honey collected from the hives is sold to generate income and enhance community livelihood. That small bee, that small bee, the buzzing of that bee, isn't it? And the stinging of that bee frightens an elephant more, isn't it? than facing a ranger with a rifle. Am I right? Yes. 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 Facing a ranger with a rifle. And the bee, the buzzing, isn't it? Scares an elephant. You can imagine this. This is a Goliath, isn't it? <laughs> the, the Goliath and, uh, and David, David scenario, isn't it? Just a bee will chase away an elephant, but the ranger will really struggle when confronted. And he will end up, of course, with uh, well, I don't want to talk about that, but there you are. Uh, recently, a new intervention, the electric fence, was introduced to enhance the protection of community livelihoods from wildlife damage. So far, about 90 kilometers um, being operation with 55 kilometers of these being in Queen Elizabeth National Park, the electric fence. Those who travel from Kazinga Channel, if you are driving towards Kasese, you will see on your right, isn't it? On your right, you will see an electric fence. It looks simple, but it's an electric fence, isn't it? It's about three meters, isn't it? High, yes. High, is it? Three meters high, but that is actually... Less, less than three meters. Yes, less than three meters. That's an electric fence. When, when, when an elephant gets closer, how many meters? Seven, eight meters? No, it can touch, but when it gets a shock, it will not come back. <laughs> it will touch, but that elephant will get a shock, isn't it? And therefore, it will not continue to cross. Uh, um, the rest of the electric fence is along Machichon Falls National Park boundary. Additional lines are planned as the effective of the fence is much higher than any of the other interventions. So in other words, it has been discovered that with an electric fence, we can achieve the goal, isn't it? Than using bees and, and tea and, uh, and the trenches. So the electric fence is more decisive, isn't it? Um, a state-of-the-art biosafety level 2 laboratory was constructed in Mwea, Queen Elizabeth National Park. The laboratory is able to diagnose and confirm a range of animal diseases, both wildlife and livestock, from viral, bacterial, fungal, and protozoa. The laboratory can handle investigations of human diseases too. A lower level, biodiversity level one laboratory was constructed in Machichon Falls National Park to support wildlife disease management through prevention and detection 
and response. The Uganda Wildlife Authority has developed capacity to carry out translocation of wildlife within and outside the protected areas. In the last 10 years, in the last 10 years, UWA has translocated over 601 wild animals of different species, the giraffe, impala, zebra, Jackson Hearte Beast, Giant Forest Hog, Eland, Waterbuck, Crocodile, Topi, among others. The objectives range from addressing human wildlife conflicts, conservation education, range expansion, species of diversification, tourism, biological management of uh, expansive vegetation, especially acacia, uh, hockey, and breeding. By 2020, the translocated animals were estimated to have multiplied to over 1,530 individuals. Those are translocated animals. With the above achievements, there is no doubt that the Uganda Wildlife Authority has played a fundamental role in the social economic transformation of our country and it is therefore in order to celebrate such important uh, milestones. We should however not lose sight of the need to even do more to address human wildlife conflicts and reduce the poaching incidents that remain high. I would like to thank the Board of Trustees, management, staff, and stakeholders who have over the last 25 years been working with Uganda Wildlife Authority. And it is through these efforts that Uganda Wildlife Authority is what it is today. Finally, as Uganda Wildlife Authority marks its Silver Jubilee on the 24th of June of this month, this year, a number of events have been arranged to celebrate this big day. Today, June 1st, we are launching the media launch. That is Uganda Wildlife Authority media coverage of the launch here at the headquarters of Uganda Wildlife Authority. On the 21st, we shall have a conservation conference, a panel discussion of Uganda Wildlife Authority, 25 years conservation journey. This will be a scientific conference, if you want, a conservation conference. Uh, 23rd June, there will be corporal, corporate social responsibility, cleaning uh, the famous Kamwokia market, and I think also cleaning the 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 wildlife the wildlife street from Mulago to Kira Road Police Station. So you will see a lot of uniformed people there, cleaning that beautiful place and cleaning those beautiful uh, sculptures, uh, making sure that making sure that 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 street is the cleanest and most beautiful in Kampala. Yeah, we shall be doing that. I will be part of that uh, cleaning. We are not copying Tarehe Sita, no, but this is ours, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is ours. Uh, then June, June 24th, the event, isn't it? That is celebration of Uganda Wildlife for 20, 25 years. Um, and of course, launching the Uganda Wildlife Authority magazine at the Sheraton Hotel. I call upon all Ugandans, our conservation and tourism partners, to promote and participate in the event and uh, in the celebration of this great wildlife conservation milestone of Uganda 
Wildlife Authority. I congratulate the entire staff. I congratulate the executive director, directors, senior officers, the entire team of Uganda Wildlife Authority. Congratulations. Looking forward for the, the D-Day. Asante Kabisa. Thank you very much. <laughs>